We see by the bag that the golf clubs, 14 of them, are of different lengths. They progress all the way from the putter all the way to the longest club, the driver. The driver is often approaching four feet of length. It's something between 43 and 46 inches. The putter, anything from 32 to 35 inches of length. As the club gets longer, the ball is positioned differently. Protocol varies a little throughout the 20th century, but the general agreement is that with the shorter clubs, the ball will be positioned, of course, nearer to the feet since the club is shorter, and also nearer to the center of the stance. It was not at all uncommon at the beginning of the 20th century to have the ball even move further right of center. It was, of course, not wrong to suggest either that as the club got longer, progressively the ball would move more toward the left foot as well as farther from the feet, so that with a wood, the ball might be positioned as much as over by the left instep, particularly with the driver. That progressive variation of the ball position through the swing from the center to the left foot is appropriate. The responsibility of that ball position in the way we hit the ball is greater and more considerable than we think. It's a popular notion in golf instruction that it's the same swing for every club in the bag. Now, to a great degree, it's true. Certainly, if you watch a champion swing, uh, first hitting a driver and then a wedge, the swing will look fundamentally the same. The question that need then, though, be asked is, yes, but did that champion need to do things differently and arguably feel different to make it look to we, the observers, the same? My argument is yes. He needed to feel and do things differently to migrate from one long club to a short one and have it look the same to us. Here's how this is influenced. With a short club, the ball is near the feet, further back in the stance, somewhere toward the center, maybe even to the right of center. Just the act of putting the club behind the ball tends to bias the body into the shapes that I've advocated. By contrast, when we hit with a wood, the ball is positioned over by the left foot more. I have a three wood here. The ball is more toward my left instep. We go through the preliminaries, tip over and crouch and walk up to the ball, and with the ball opposite the left foot, put the club by the ball wrong. And I say that because the club and the shoulders are going to be looking to the left subtly. Of course, if I exaggerate and put the ball way outside my left foot, my shoulders and club are looking dramatically to the left. We don't even let the club get to the ball in this slightly twisted position before, since we presume that the club face should be perfectly square and per perpendicular to the intended line of flight, before we presume that we have to adjust it. And the way we adjust it is simple. We just push our hands to the left. Now we're lulled into a false sense of confidence because we have the ball in the right place, the club looks square, and we're about to use the swing that had worked with a 9 iron. The false sense of confidence is because, in fact, since the shoulders were not accommodated in that adjustment, we're actually hitting the ball with this. The club face is open. For 700 years, golfers have lamented the fact that they hit their uh, baffy off into the uh, Scotsman's back garden on the right side of the golf course, whereas they hit their mashy niblick or niblick well. These are ancient names for a wood, a fairway wood, or a short iron. Irons came along in the middle of the 19th century. To overcome this discrepancy without simply just chuckling and saying it's a function of the length of the club and the straightness of face and greater likelihood of side spin and magnification of difficulty making good contact, but to actually take responsibility for this more appropriately to what we see on the TV where the champions clearly can control their woods quite well. We have to reflect that the ball position, this one notable change that visibly emerges from one end of the set to the other, has more responsibility. Here's how we fix it. We, of course, go through the preliminaries. We do put the ball by the left foot. We tip over, crouch, and walk to the ball and put the club by the ball looking briefly wrong. It'll be looking to the left, as are our shoulders. The way we fix it is not to shove the hands to the left and leave the shoulders unaffected and unimproved. Uh, we simply twist the left shoulder, hip and knee, toward the ball, toward the ball. This twists the club square and rectifies the shoulders synchronously. Now that can lead to some excessive weight distribution and knee bend qualities. You may end up with all of your weight on one leg, with one leg straight. Even out the weight distribution and knee bend, 
and then lightly ground the club, waggle and fire. <laughs>